Welcome back into the Sports Source. This segment brought to you by Daniel Hood Roofing. Brand new roofs of all types and prices just to meet your needs and your budget. Roof repair and guttering work. These guys do tons of new gutters. When it comes to roofs and gutters or just repair work, get guaranteed work from Daniel Hood Roofing. DanielHoodRoofing.com Okay, this is our rapid fire segment. Everybody's going to get a quickie, quickie shot here, about one minute on each of these gentlemen. We are behind. Jimmy, one, has gotten a lot of hype in his career. One is playing in a system that gets the most out of quarterbacks. Who is the better player, Henry To'o To'o or Hendon Hooker? Hendon Hooker. Uh, and look, I like Henry T, and I thought he was a nice player here, and I think he's an okay player at Alabama. I think Hooker's one of the top five quarterbacks in the SEC. Would I put Henry T in the top five linebackers in the SEC? No. Top ten? No. I think Hendon Hooker's a better player. I wish we had the wide shot there because, Will, could you, could you do your – He's better than that. There we go. There we go. Hendon Hooker, 19 of 28 yesterday, 282 yards, three touchdowns, one interception. On a bruised knee. Yeah. Pretty good. And, uh, and the wide receivers came through yesterday. I've given them some crap for uh, too many drops this year and – Troubles versus press coverage, they came through yesterday. When, I'm, when they come through, I say it. All right. Uh, Will, Tennessee has been burned by quarterbacks using their legs in the pit game, the Florida game, versus Ole Miss. And again last night, Bryce Young beat you with his legs. Is this, though, and we've talked about it week after week, is this, though, a Tennessee problem? Or as I was thinking about it, how many teams have had trouble with Hendon Hooker? Is this a Tennessee problem, or is this an everyone problem because you've had the proliferation of spread offenses and dual threat quarterbacks. I think it's an everyone problem. I mean, it, it's the toughest. If you've got a quarterback that, that can run and is athletic, then you know, you've basically said we've got an extra guy to block, right? And so use in a different way to get open and our quarterback can make the play. But it's also this, it's that the defense is now, you know, basically playing handicapped or one arm behind their back. If you're going to tackle a quarterback, you know, running up to them, they're going to call it differently for this guy than anybody else. And I'm telling you, it slows you down half a step. And that's what's happened because the quarterback is so taken care of, so wrapped in bubble wrap that you can't hit him. And because if you hit a quarterback hard and you heard the fans go, oh, they'd throw the flag whether it was completely legal or not. And they're going to check it out because it's the quarterback and it's treated just like the NFL. You can't touch him here. You can't touch him there. So that's the other thing. The quarterback knows they're safer than their other players in the field, and they're not going to pay a likely price. Except when it's Bama targeting Hendon Hooker <laughs> last night. I uh, forgot. That's, that's the one. <laughs> All right, Josh. Yep. Ironically, Alabama fans saw Tennessee players <laughs> hit the field after a couple of good Alabama plays, so they started booing for what they viewed as flopping. My question for you is, unless a rule change is made, and we discussed that last week, unless a rule change is made, are we simply now in an era where every injured player is going to be booed? Yeah, it seems that way. And uh, I, I don't like it. I, I think it's unfortunate. It's difficult to tell, is a guy really hurt or not? I mean, sometimes it's pretty obvious. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I think it's just it's here until a rule change happens, and that's why I think they need to do that. But uh, be careful about throwing those stones because uh, one week in your stadium and then the next week in another, it could be you booing other players. Er not everybody yeah. maybe, but a lot of coaches are trying to figure out how to do it. A lot of coaches in the SEC, including Tennessee's coach. It was oh, a well. golf ball, not a stone. <laughs> 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 All right. Chuck. Yes. Jeremy Pruitt's lawyer did the inevitable this week. Uh, what he said he, what, what we said he would do way back in January. Uh, he made threats about spilling his guts on other violations at Tennessee, specifically with men's basketball, the, other, the only other winning money maker on that campus right now, money maker. Uh, should Tennessee simply settle with Pruitt and make this go away, or should they face discovery in a lawsuit on principle? Uh, principle goes out the window with me. Uh, and I hope Jeremy Pruitt likes the NFL. He's with the Giants now, right? Because I think he's done yeah. as a college coach after this. I think he... Uh, I, I, I think that was really low. Uh, to me, it, it's borderline blackmail. I know they do it. Uh, but you also know with people in real estate, you hear this all the time, what does the contract say? And that is certainly not in Tennessee's favor on this. So I would pursue a settlement and I would try and make it go away as soon as I could. I agree. Uh, and I said this, we argued this when it was the Title IX thing. And 
I said, settle it, it goes away. And there was the thought that, no, it means you're guilty and people are going to talk about it. As soon as you settled it, it was gone. It was done. Nobody talked about any of it. It was just vapor. If I'm UT and I don't want people, if I don't want to hand over cell phones for Rick Barnes and everybody else, and I don't want the NCA over there, here's, the, here's your check. Do I make it out to a hole? There, now go away. <laughs> That's what I do. And yeah. I end it, and then I... Yeah, and then I go to New Orleans and hire a voodoo priest just to curse his bald head. That's what I think. And say, how much is the city legal fees to okay. this point? You know? Yes, stop. Stop. That's, a, that's stop. the thing. Is it, there is definitely always a calculation in a lawsuit like this of where diminishing returns, if I can get it for this price, absolutely. And so you're just negotiating to this point of how far can I get close to that number. But you have to have that number where you go, it's worth it because you are going to end up, if it's a two year dragged out thing, you're going to pay six million, eight million dollars exactly. in legal fees. So you need to find the right number. With the time <laughs> thing, one of the reasons I said um, at the time to settle it, I talked to someone at UT who told me, John, we can settle this for less than our legal fees will be. And I came and said this on the show, I couldn't tell you what the number was going to be and then it was less than two million bucks. It's like, well, no wonder. Okay, yeah, your legal fees would have been that big. And I, you know, if you got half of his buyout, $6 million, and that's, that's less than you'd pay in legal fees, and who knows what comes out of that yeah, that absolutely. they might find, pay the $6 million and be done with it. Yeah. Jimmy, you were going to say something? I was going to say that's what they did with the, the Title IX, but the other part of that is, name me the last time Tennessee has won a suit. They always settle, right? Yeah. Whether it's Most Debbie, Debbie Jennings or Title IX. Or, so they'll settle with this one. The only question is, what's the number going to be? Yeah. All right, uh, speaking of Rick Barnes and basketball, let me tell you what we're doing next week. It's an open date here, but of course we're year-round. We should have a graphic here any minute. There it is. Uh, next week, these are who's scheduled to be on the show. Got some different faces, different voices. We'll have more than this, but Ryan Callahan, Vince Farrar, David Oven will be back with us. Bobby Scott, I believe, is going to be with us. He was supposed to be on with us before the season, but he couldn't be here. Mark Pankratz and Isaiah Victor are going to be here for the last half hour next week to talk basketball, and I'm sure we'll have some other surprises in there for you next week during the open week. When we come back, our VFLs will be back, and they're going to talk about a team that I am finding extremely likable. Not just the coaching staff, this team is likable. Um, and I'll show you a couple of quotes, and we'll see what these guys say with regards to those quotes. Come on back on the Sports Source.